What's up everybody, Ninth Jim here back with another VGC 2020 Pokemon Sword and Shield competitive video with single spotlight. Today we're talking about Mandy Buzz, the Dark Flying Mandy Buzz, Manda Buzz. Uh, the Dark Flying Pokemon introduced with Braviary, its counterpart to Braviary. Braviary being a little bit better in my opinion. However, Manda Buzz is still really cool. It does a lot of really good things. It denies Trick Room pretty easily um, in certain Trick Room matchups. Not all matchups, but it is pretty good against Trick Room as well as just being pretty pesky being a pretty pesky bird in general so anyway we're gonna start talking about it so dark flying type pretty solid immunities to ground and psychic resistances to grass ghost and dark all pretty good weaknesses to electric ice rock fairy all pretty bad um, but you know we're really bulky this Pokemon is actually exceptionally bulky with great stats across the board with great investments and um, a berry to help us out we can live a lot of attacks and that's pretty sweet um, so we'll go ahead and jump into the stats here. So 110 HP is really solid, 105 defense is really solid, and 95 special defense is also really solid. This Pokemon is super sturdy, definitely going to be able to, to ch just chill for a long time, you know, throwing out Roost, Tailwind, Taunt, Foul Play. The moveset's really beneficial to its, to its being, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, on to our other stats. So we have attack at 65, which is not great, but you know, it's fine. Um, you throw out, you could definitely switch out fall play for knockoff. I just like this Pokemon being able to deal with things that are, have been out for a while. You know, things like, uh, the Mudsdale, the Snorlax, kind of the same reasoning with Umbreon being able to foul play big, big threats like that, being able to take them out. This Pokemon doesn't have yawn like that to, to stop the Dynamax, but you can pair it with something like that, you know, something, um, with yawn or like even paralyze you know pa pair it with something like grim snarl to thunder wave those pokemon it's just an idea um although you can't thunder wave mudsdale so maybe like some form of sleep you know maybe togekiss um anyway special attack 55 we don't care about it it's fine it's like it's low so it's fine it doesn't take away from too much and then 80 speed which is not bad you know it's pretty fast and it's, it hits a really good sp uh mid tier it's on the same tier as things like Togekiss and Braviary and Chandelure, although most of those are commonly fast. So we're not going to be out outspeeding or speed tying those Pokemon. Uh, maybe like Togekiss every now and again, you know, like some Togekiss don't have any speed, you know, but you know. <laughs> uh, anyway, into our actual build. So like 245 into the build. So item Wakenberry. The reason I do Wakenberry is because we're very bulky. Um, defensively however a lot of things that have special attacking or most uh, most electric attacks are special you know not all but most you know things like wild charge aren't but things like thunderbolt volt switch thunder are and walkenberry helps us patch that up the 68 special defense doesn't help us from everything you know like rotom mo with life orb can still kill us with thunderbolt um which so we have walkenberry but you can also switch that out for something else. We have Leftovers, we have Aguave, Citrus Berry, we even have Rosalie Berry being able to have that fairy type damage. You know, you have a lot of options with this Pokemon, all being berries in my opinion, and Leftovers, which is kind of kind of a baby berry. Um, you get it from berry trees, so it's berry, you know. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, I like Walking Berry. It helps us live those things like the Rotom Mo, the Life Orb. You see that a lot now. Um, yeah. So, into our ability Overcoat. So, this is actually pretty relevant. So, it stops. Um, first off, you don't take damage from, like, Sandstorm and stuff, which is like, ooh, cool. It's fine. You know, it's cool to not take damage from those and, like, hail and stuff. And then we also don't... Or we're unaffected by powder moves. So, like, Sleep Powder, Poison Powder, um, Rage Powder. We're unaffected by all those. So, that's the reason I say that, like, Butterfree leads, we kind of just destroy. So, say they open, like, Butterfree Bronzong. You can use Overcoat to get through the Rage Powder. And you can just taunt the Bronzong to keep just deny Trick Room. It's really powerful being able to deny Trick Room. And uh, Butterfree doesn't like pressure this Pokemon very much. You know, like Bug is just one time, so it's fine. Uh, if they like Pollen Puff you, it's fine. And if they try to Sleep Powder you, you can just be like, okay, cool, you failed. Because <laughs> Overcoat's really powerful. Um, we've seen Overcoat on other things like Reuniclus, you know, being able to like dodge that Sleep Powder, which is really good. Uh, being able to set that trick room this is denying the trick room you know pretty similar but completely different <laughs> you know uh overcoat is pretty sweet though it, it really is other than that we also have access to big pecs which i don't remember exactly what it does i think it like 
uh, prevents other Pokemon from lowering our defense. You know, that's cool, but it's like it's fine we don't need it overcoat's better in my opinion especially since we like denied trick room with this with common butterfree leads and butterfree is actually pretty prevalent so it's good to deny that anyway into our moves we have foul play taunt roost tailwind so foul play is to deal with those big attacking threats the swords dancing pokemon the belly drum stamina not stamina own tempo swagger all of these things these huge threats we can foul play do huge damage and we have that in damage calcs that we'll show you all, uh we'll show off but that's later later section but for now if, if you want to see it right now you can go into the to the description and click the timestamps for it boom uh anyway foul play it's pretty sweet i like it a lot you can definitely switch it out for knockoff if you don't think uh if you have like the rest of your team can really deal with that pretty well then you can just run knockoff knockoff is really good knocking off the item of Pokemon it can be really pesky th hitting things like Conkledor's Assault Vest off, Mudsdale's Assault Vest, um, Life Orb from Duraludon, you know, a lot of big deal items you can just get rid of with knockoff, which is really, really solid. And then we also have Taunt, Roost, and Tailwind. So Taunt is to deny Trick Room. It also denies a bunch of other stuff, which is really good. Roost is just really good. This Pokemon, it, it lasts forever. It's on the field for a long time. You have really bulky stats and really good um, resistances and stuff like that so roost is really good just in general you have to be careful though because of slow ground attackers because it grounds you for the turn but you're really slow so most ground attackers aren't gonna do that um, ground wouldn't even really matter too much anyway we're fine with that and then for our last move we have tailwind so I like tailwind a lot just giving you really fast Pokemon. Even though we don't have Pranks or Tailwind, I still think Tailwind is very, very viable on Pokemon like this. Just giving you that double speed for a few turns is really, really powerful. And then for our other moves that we can flex in, so we have Snarl, which is really good. We see that on Arcanine all the time. Um, just lowering the special attack of both opposing Pokemon. Snarl is really good. I like it a lot. And then we also have Toxic and Substitute. So these kind of play together really well. You can Toxic things. You can Substitute Roost. It is super, super annoying. If you don't care to deny Trick Room, you can definitely run Toxic Sub um, instead of the Taunt and Tailwind, or even Foul Play and Tailwind, um, or Foul Play and Taunt, you know? Toxic Sub is, it's damaging, but it's low damage, but it's Pokemon Super Pesky. So you want Toxic Sub and Roost on the same set, so if you do opt to, to try the Toxic Sub, those three moves and then you can run something like knock off to run all get away of like leftovers the berries you know assault vest things like that to make your pokemon just do more damage in general you have to make sure that your partner is doing a lot of stuff when you use the toxic sub just because it's not doing very much continual damage and your opponent your opponent can kind of just like not care about the the mandibuzz and just like target down your your other pokemon so you have to like play around that really well and to so toxic sub requires a good bit of uh, testing and stuff to understand how good it really is but it's definitely good don't sleep on it and it's definitely a fun set to use uh, not for your opponent but for you it is pretty fun um, anyway on to our stats so we have 252 invested into HP 188 plus invested into defense since we're impish nature giving us plus defense minus special attack since we don't use special attack at all and then we also have 68 into special defense so the main reason I did this was 188 lets us live just about everything that is physical that you can expect and why pour thing why pour uh more evs into it if you're already doing the job at 188 so we're giving the poor we're pouring the leftover 68 into special defense which is pretty good it helps us live a lot of random things like uh togekiss dazzling gleam then like uninvested togekiss dazzling gleam then three shots us instead of two shots us and then um same with moon blast from whimsicott it two shots us instead of where it has a chance of three-shotting us, I think. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's in the damage caps. We'll talk about it more later. Um, but this is pretty solid. I like this build. I think it's really good. You can definitely play around with the stats, giving it more into defense or more into special defense. But I've found the 188 being really solid into defense, or 188 plus into defense, is it has been very solid. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. So, we'll go ahead and talk about some synergetic Pokemon. Uh, before we move on to speed tiers. So first off we have Arcanine. This is like kind of a no-brainer It works with just about everything. It just makes you bulkier. It gives you intimidate. It gives Will-O-Wisp and Snarl so huge huge 
damage reduction you know other than like that is very very powerful intimidate snarl will-o-wisp it, it just gives you a lot of more additional bulk not inherent bulk like not buffs but in the form of making your opponent's guys do less damage so kind of bulkier in in turn and that's really really powerful it's a really good supplement to mandibuzz since it's so bulky um since it's so naturally bulky and we invest into bulk it's really good and then another one is the excadrill so the excadrill kind of does the same thing um but different it bul bulks yourself up so you can use max excadrill and go for um you know max moves which is really good going for max quake max steel spike giving you uh, defense and special defense boosts all over the place. It's really good. It's a really good partner. It covers a lot of your um, Weaknesses also you can switch out and making making it a very good switch in for this Pokemon, you know with it being immune to electric and Resists fairy and rock so that's really good across the board. You just it is a really good Pokemon You still got to be careful of ice, you know things like the Galarian Darmanitan um, ice beam from a Gastron or Milotic things like that you have to be wary of that, but overall it's pretty pretty i think there's an ice cream truck in my neighborhood i just heard like like that tune oh well i don't know um anyway for our other synergy here it's just rotom wash so having that uh, the what am i thinking i was thinking a ground weakness or a ground immunity that's weird I don't know it covers all of our weaknesses fairly well you know it doesn't resist much but it just takes a lot of things really really easily so you can switch it in on electric you can switch it in on ice you know even rock I wouldn't it's not the best but it's better than taking the rock from mandibuzz and then also fairy you know it, it's pretty good I don't know I was thinking I wanted a ground immunity when I did that I, I don't that was weird um, anyway good Pokemon against us is special attacking Pokemon um, typically you know other things can also threaten us very very easily as well so whimsicott ed has access to taunt taunt shuts down our entire means of doing anything so that's annoying it has taunt it also has moon blast which is annoying two shouting us and then we also have the rotom any form of rotom you know rotom wash rotom heat rotom mo just using thunderbolt if it's bulky then we don't do much damage if it's strong if it's uh, a fast like if it's sweepy sweepy if it if it's offensive then it does a lot of damage with thunderbolt and there's not really much we can do about that you know they can burn us and then we just do no damage as well um which is fine we're like comfortable with not doing much damage but i you'd rather like do more damage you know um so yeah that's about it for this slide oh yeah and then tyranitar um tyranitar kind of just like shuts us down completely you know doing things like rock slide resisting all of our stuff however foul play is still really strong into it when we're the the when their weakness policy when they proc their weakness policy we still do like 50 percent damage which is really really good but not enough you know when they're like okoing us or getting close to with rock slide it's, re it's really powerful uh, we have that into in our damage calcs as well so we'll go ahead and jump into the speed tiers here so our speed tiers are not really in our favor we hit that 100 speed tier uninvested um, I've seen a lot of builds that, like invest a bunch into speed like one like 68 I think was the most common on Picolytics or 60 speed I think 68 60 68 I don't know one of the two it gives you nine eight or nine points um, which I just don't see being super super relevant so I just poured that into special attack instead since it helps us lift things like the dazzling gleam from uninvested togekiss um, and we can actually live max starfall. We have a chance to live max starfall fall from offensive togekiss not weakness policy proc it'll always kill us then but Yeah, like we have some damage calcs, so we'll talk about it more later though um, However, we are at 100 we're on the same speed tier as togekiss braviary chandelure Pokemon like that Although braviary and chandelure are famously invested into speed uh, Togekiss not always, you know, usually togekiss will have a little bit of speed. I think a lot of um, common builds invest even just four which will then outspeed us every time so that is annoying but it's okay like we don't really care too much to get outsped by togekiss it sucks obviously since a two to three shots us um but yeah it kind of sucks it, it just really kind of sucks <laughs> um 
you can definitely ex it speed like invest a little bit into Amanda Buzz. You know, being able to outspeed most Togekiss builds. You know, putting nine speed points or putting like 68 speed points into Amanda Buzz if you value that live survivability, which is definitely a good thing to to uh, invest in. But yeah, anyway, past that, we're past that. Um, things that outspeed us is my low tick uninvested at 101. This is pretty annoying, especially if it has ice beam or is like an offensive my low tick. I've seen that before, like running adrenaline orb, just leaning into every intimidate that you possibly can, and then setting off your adrenaline orb, and then setting off your competitive, and then maxing it, and then having access to max geyser and max hailstorm. It's really powerful. The ice beam, icy wind, max hailstorm will do a lot of damage to us, so that's something we have to keep in mind. And we don't really threaten it very much, especially with foul play. You know, knockoff does threaten it a little bit, getting rid of that leftovers or berry, but it's not enough threat to really care too much to like switch it out. Like Milo Tick just has a solid matchup against the Mandibuzz. And then another thing that outspeeds us every time, it's gonna be in DD female. This Pokemon doesn't threaten us too much either, so so it's fine. It actually like a lot of Ndd Fs only have one attacking move being psychic, which we are immune to. So we should be able to win that matchup a lot of the time. However, Overcoat doesn't get through follow me. So if they start Ndd Hatterene, then they can still set up Trick Room without a hitch, which is annoying, but it is a thing. Um, then next we have 106 Form Change Rotom. This Pokemon is like pretty f like typically going to be played faster than 106. However, that just means it's going to outspeed us all the time, and that's annoying because Thunderbolt and Volt Switch and and things like that, Discharge even, um, all those attacks aren't really good against us. But we have Wackenberry, so we can live one, probably just one, <laughs> um, but maybe you can live other stuff sometimes. Um, out, things that we do outspeed, so if they play hindering min speed, Mimikyu will be able to outspeed it. If not, then they'll be outspeeding us and using play rough, which is annoying and does a lot of damage. Doesn't Oko us because we're very defensively bulky. However, it does do a lot of damage. Um, then we have at 85, Umbreon and Gothitelle. Umbreon can taunt us, that's pretty annoying. And then Gothitelle, um, we can taunt them. Deny Trick Room, Deny Heal Pulse, Deny Ally Switch. All those moves are really, really good. And even Hypnosis. Like, Gravity... I've seen Gravity Hypnosis. Um, hint, no leaks. That's a, maybe an upcoming video. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. 85. We can uh, we can outspeed those pretty well. That's uninvested. So, Gothitelle will typically... Or, very frequently, if Gothitelle is on a Trick Room team, it'll be min speed. It'll hit, like, 65. So, we'll be outspeeding that every time. And if not, it won't. It usually won't have very much speed invested if it's uninvested. Then, um, so we should be out outspeeding Gothitelle every time as well. And then, Jellicent, Galarian, Weezing, and Sylveon, we outspeed those typically. You know, Sylveon can be run fast. I've never really seen it, but it definitely could be run fast. And a lot of them have uh, Tailwind typically on their team as an option since Sylveon is such a mid-speed Pokemon. You know, it can it can really get a lot of mileage off of uh, both. Tailwind and Trick Room, so that's pretty good. And then Galarian Weezing has Strange Steam, but we outspeed it. And then Jellicent, a lot of Jellicents are going to be min speed as well. But yeah, the first place Dallas team, like the Aaron, Tra I talk about that team all the time. It's really, really powerful. A lot of people are playing it, are basing a lot of spreads off of it. I know I did. Um, I, I based my Conquador spread recently off of that team. It's just very, very powerful. And yeah, people like the net deck. Uh, that's a term for other games, but still. Anyway, we're really far into this video. Jeez, 18 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and jump into damage calcs here. So first da damage calc is the Dazzling Gleam from 68 Special Attack. This is a really common spread you'll see of the bulky Togekiss is at 68 Special Attack. Doing only 38 to 45% damage, guaranteed 3 hit KO. That's really, really good for us, actually. Um, and this is doubles, so if you protect with your other Pokemon, you know, it'll do a little bit more damage. But it would still guarantee... No, it would still likely 3 hit KO. Unlikely 3 hit KO. It would, it would most likely 2 hit KO, so just keep that in mind. Um, Demer... Ugh. Darmanitan Galar Ice Crash, Max Invested. This is with Adamant Nature. You'll see it about... It's pretty close to a 50-50 split of Adamant Nature and, and uh, Jolly Nature. So if it's Jolly Nature, it has zero chance of Okoing us. But if it's Adamant Nature, it has a 12.5 chance of Okoing us, which is a very, very slim chance. Not something I'd want to risk every time. If you can keep away from the 
the Galar Darmanitan and threaten it with something else and kill it first, I would advise that. But for now, it's fine. Um, the next one we have is Wim's Got Moon Blast, doing 52 to 61 percent guaranteed two hit KO. That really sucks, actually. It should be a three hit KO, but Wim's Got does this much too much attack, and uh, it's a little annoying. And then for our next one, we have Tyranitar Rock Slide. This is weakness policy procced. We guaranteed live it 67 to 80%. Now, if they max Rock Fall, it's going to kill us. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. However, in my experience, Tyranitar doesn't max very frequently. Um, even running weakness policy, you usually just like Dynamax something else. I see it all like very, very frequently. They Dynamax something else. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, next, we have the reverse <laughs> the foul play that's the incorrect that's an incorrect calc that's the same calc wait 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 whoops that's the same calc uh foul play plus two so we'll be doing 43 to 51 percent guaranteed uh or possible two hit ko but most likely a three hit ko so yeah that was dumb of me though i put down the same calc anyway whatever um, foul play into a belly drum boosted Snorlax. This is after its Dynamax is over. We have a 93.8% chance to Oko after the belly drum with foul play after the Dynamax. So if you can outlive that Dynamax, you can come in and pressure it so much with foul play that it's really good. So it becomes a good matchup. Um, this is another thing that you kind of want to have like Togekiss on your team to be able to yawn it and then you yawn it. Or you can taunt with Mandibuzz. Um, either way, it's a really powerful play in general and if you can get through it like you can just pressure it so much with foul play um anyway i went to our single spotlight so i'm gonna keep this one kind of brief um just because we're already at like 22 minutes almost uh yikes i hope you guys are still watching um anyway singles spotlight so we have manda buzz it's actually played pretty well it's a heavy duty boots knockoff defogger so you can bring this pokemon in on hazards pretty safely since stealth rock would usually threaten this pokemon a lot heavy duty boots gives you that restraint not restraint it gives you zero damage from the entry hazards you're completely immune so you come in and then you de defog get rid of all of them and then bring in your pokemon that like to be bulky and continue playing through the stealth rocks uh, which is really really powerful in our set we have overcoat similar to our other build and then we also have knockoff taunt roost and defog so taunt really helps us deal with pokemon um like other big wall pokemon that it, it's just good it's a good move in general you can switch it into u-turn to threaten pokemon like uh the clefable or like reposition so that you're not threatened by those pokemon but you can use taunt or u-turn to be honest like either one is very good and then we also have roost which is good, you just want to live for a while, being able to come in, defog, reposition, set up roost, it's really good. And then knockoff giving continual damage and pressure by getting rid of their items. Knockoff is a really powerful attack. Uh, you can definitely switch this out for foul play as well, depending on the rest of your team. And into our uh, investments, we have 252 into HP and then 252 into special defense, giving us, and with careful nature as well, giving us that plus in special defense and minus in special attack since we don't use it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. And then overall, you want to have just like... So this Pokemon will be in pretty mid-range teams with uh, pretty powerful bulk. And like just rather bulky Pokemon, you know, and pretty balanced team in general. Things like Ferrothorn, Toxapex, um, and Jellicent. And then maybe a Sweeper or two, maybe some powerful, some Wall Breakers, stuff like that. Um, you want to be able to deal damage as well, since this Pokemon is famously not able to deal a huge amount of damage, and neither is Toxapex or Jellicent, really. Ferrothorn can definitely put out some damage. Um, but yeah, that's about it for Mandibuzz, actually. So, yeah, 24 minutes. We're really far into this video, so I'm going to keep this outro short. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, you're the best. Thank you so much for watching. I have a whole bunch of requests, so if you requested something within the last few days... Keep that in mind. They'll be coming up in the next few days. I have like five or six requests. This was a request. Um, so yeah, they're all coming. Don't worry. If yours isn't the next video, it will be maybe the next or the next or the next or the next. Or the next. Um, but they're all in a line and they're coming um, fast. One Once a day, baby. Maybe more than once a day, but I'll keep the guides to once a day just because I don't want to overwhelm anybody with that. So many guides. Anyway, giveaway coming soon. 
more info once we get closer to a K, probably around 700, 800 subs. I'm going to start doing that, the, the official announcement. But keep that in mind and like and subscribe. It means so much to me. And we're at 25 minutes, so thank you so much for watching and goodbye.